Hey folks, I'm Pastor Eric Tritton from Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Hudson, Ohio, and this is A Weekly Word, where we are working our way through the first two chapters of Acts. And uh, today we come to chapter two and talk a little bit about Pentecost, this, uh, this celebration that uh, we just had this last week, uh, this past Sunday, where everything was uh, in red, and we talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit. So let me, let me read to you the first verses of, uh, of Acts chapter 2, and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on here. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem, devout people from every nation under heaven. When this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each one of us can hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those who live in Mesopotamia, in Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the magnificent acts of God in our own tongues. They were all astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But some sneered and said, They're drunk on new wine. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, Fellow Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let this be known to you and pay attention to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only nine in the morning. On the contrary, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. I will even pour out my Spirit on my servants in those days, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I will display wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So Pentecost takes place 50 days after Easter. It actually is a Jewish festival before we Christians took it on as the name of the, the, the day of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was a kind of a harvest festival, and it's another one of those those festivals that required every Jewish man to come to Jerusalem. So, because it's so close to Easter, or that was Passover, um, many of the Jewish people who were there at Passover, when Jesus rose from the dead, were still there. And they, they just stayed during that whole time. Some went back and then they came again. But the, the point I'm making is that there were probably many people who had been there when Jesus rose from the dead, and they heard the, the hubbub about that. Um, and now they're experiencing another miracle uh, from God's hand to, uh, to, to draw them back to himself. And when we look at Pentecost, and we look at the coming of the Holy Spirit, often what we focus on is this, this sound of a rushing wind, the, the tongues of flame that uh, were over the, uh, the apostles' heads, and, uh, and then this, this speaking in tongues, this speaking in other languages. And there's some debate over what exactly that means. Some people think that, think that this means that they spoke kind of a, a divine language and then everybody was able to understand no matter where they were from. Um, it's kind of an anti-Babel uh, moment. You know, in Genesis, it speaks of the Tower of Babel and God confused their speech. And this is kind of the opposite of that where 
where God gives the disciples speech that draws everybody together. Uh, the, the other interpretation is that each of the, uh, the disciples is given a, a different dialect that they're able then to speak in, in order to, to proclaim God's word to those who are gathered there. Either way, as you look at this miracle, um, the point of it is actually that the Holy Spirit, as we say in the small catechism, continues to call, gather, and enlighten Christians or God's people or just generally people in order that they could come to him and receive the forgiveness that Jesus has won. So when we think of the things that go on in Pentecost, probably one of the key words that we should think about other than, than wind or flames or, or even tongues is the word prophecy. Now, I, I think that sometimes we get a little bit goofed up on exactly what prophecy means. We tend to think of prophecy as predicting the future. And that is something that prophets did sometimes, that God gave them visions for the future and, and asked them to, uh, or commanded them to proclaim this to the people. But ultimately, the, the prophecy is actually about saying what God has said. It's actually about proclaiming God's word. And that's, that's what was going on that day when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. He empowered them to prophesy. He empowered them to proclaim God's word so that people could hear it and come to faith through the proclamation of the word. So the real miracle of Pentecost isn't really these outward things, but, but the miracle is that God speaks to sinners in, in order to bring the message of salvation to them, to bring the message of grace to them. And not just them, but by extension, us, so that we can believe in Jesus and receive the salvation that he's won. And most of what Peter talks about, if you read through the rest of, uh, of that sermon, is really about what has Jesus done and how has God fulfilled his promise to redeem humanity through his servant, Jesus, through his son, Jesus. So the, the message that's proclaimed, it's both law and gospel. You know, that Jesus has defeated death and he was risen from the dead. And at the same time, the, the message that's proclaimed to the people is that they rejected their Messiah. And they rejected their Savior. In fact, they, they killed and crucified him. And this message of law and gospel is still central to who we are as Christians. It's still central to the prophecy or the proclamation of God's people today. We speak the truth of God's law that condemns us for our sin, but then we point people to Jesus and we proclaim this gift of salvation that comes to us by faith as we hear the word, as we're cut to the heart, and as we then repent and receive Jesus' forgiveness in the waters of baptism and by the proclamation of his word. And the, the great news is that this promise is not just for us adults, but it's for you and for your children and for all who are far away, whom the Lord our God will call. But I think it's important for us to remember that repentance is, well, it's the way of the Christian life. We've received Jesus' forgiveness, and therefore we're called to turn away from our sin. And the first sin that we're actually called to turn away from is faithlessness. The, the Holy Spirit creates faith in us and we are no longer to live as faithless people. We're to trust in Jesus for our salvation and we get to trust in him for the forgiveness of all of our sins. The, the, the message of Pentecost is that the disciples were given the Spirit that they might proclaim the, the magnificent acts of God. And what's more magnificent than the fact that he gave his Son to die to atone for our sins, and that he raised him from the dead in order to give us everlasting life. And this is a message that we've been given to proclaim. We've been given it to receive it, but we've also been given it to proclaim it, and to proclaim it in a language that the people will understand as the Holy Spirit empowers us. So don't be ashamed of this message. Don't hide it away. The Holy Spirit has been given to you in order that you might 
go about this work of prophesying. In other words, of telling people about Jesus. We do that in a unique way when we gather for the worship services on Sundays. But in our individual lives, as the priesthood of all believers, we get to share this good news and we get to proclaim it to others so that they too may receive the Holy Spirit and receive the faith and the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, if this was helpful to you, please like it and share it. Um, and, uh, and come back next week because when we look at what happened on Pentecost, one of the other things that we focus on is how many people came to faith on that day. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and kind of talk about how they handled uh, that situation. So anyhow, uh, God's blessings. I hope you'll come back next week. Mm -hmm.